Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Welcome to the Small Business Fuel Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Wilson, Jr., and I serve as the area director of the UGA Small Business Development Center at Georgia State University. The purpose of this show is to provide relevant resources and essential information to small businesses in Georgia that helps you grow and succeed. This show is produced, recorded, and distributed on several social media and streaming platforms by our resource partner, our incredible resource partner, uh, Business Radio X. Um, I'm joined today by my wonderful, illustrious, amazing co-host, uh, Talisha Farrell Jackson, who's a small business specialist uh, for the Georgia Department of Administrative Services. I call her the chief small business cheerleader for the state. She's an advocate on their behalf of a contract specialist, procurement officers, and end users. So how are you doing today, Talisha? I am well. Thank you, Paul. I'm a little hot in Georgia right now. But, yeah. You know. know. It's been get, getting a little warmer today. We're getting a little closer to the summer. It is. Thank goodness. <laughs> Definitely turn those air conditioners up right now. Absolutely. Well, good. Uh, well, I know we have a great show um, in store today with some great guests. And so um, I'll give you the honors. Would you like to introduce our guest for today? Oh, absolutely. Would love to. Today with us, we have Pinnacle Custom Signs. And uh, we have Brad Arno, and we have the owner, Don Conklin. And so Don and his wife, Teresa, they're the proud owners of Pinnacle Custom Signs, a full-service commercial sign company that's located right here in Georgia in Beaufort. And so the company was started about 10 years ago in 2011. Yes, because it's already 2021. Can you believe it? Um, But prior to operating the business, Don spent 25 years in the telecom industry, mostly with Bell South. He has extensive experience in managing large and small operations, both domestically and internationally. So he and Teresa have four wonderful sons. Can you imagine what that household is like? And soon to have their seventh grandchild. They reside in Flowery Branch, Georgia, and we are happy to have him with us today. And before I let Dawn speak, hey, Dawn, I'll just say, hey, Dawn. Hey, how are you? I'm well, thank you. We also, you also brought one of your hardworking uh, project managers with you, Brad Arnall. And he has been with Pinnacle Custom Signs for just a short period of time, only a year. But in that year, he's been very impactful from what I hear. He came to Pinnacle Custom Signs as a former customer for a national client and uh, part of the C2 education, and there uh, where he was a national construction and facilities manager. So Brad has extensive prior experience in retail and restaurant ownership, and he proudly attended Clemson University. Sorry. Tigers. We won't hold that against him. <laughs> and so he lives in Flowery Branch as well. We're going to find out if they live next door or if he's living no, in the no. basement of Don's house. Oh, no. Um, But he has three children ranging from 10 to 24 years old, uh, which keeps him very busy when he's not working. And he enjoys spending time with his kids and attending car races and shows and cooking. So welcome, Dawn. Welcome, Brad. To the show. Thank you. you. So I have to throw in that I did graduate from that small small town school over in Tuscaloosa, so don't hold that against me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Got a little rivalry here going so mortal, on. Yeah, yeah, mortal football, college football enemies. So. Right. <laughs> and I know, I know UGA certainly hopes they beat both of us. This yes, year. yes, they right, do. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, well, good. Well, definitely welcome, guys. I appreciate you being on the show. And so we're going to just learn a little bit about your business. Um, and, and again, as I said, our audience, small business owners, I'm sure you all have been in business. So actually, well, tell us. Um, how long have you been in business and how y'all got involved um, in this industry? That's an interesting comment. So um, my wife and I um, were both in telecom. Actually, she was on the data side of it. I was on the operation side. And, you know, my late 40s, it was like, is this all there is to it? Right. And so um, I thought I had enough knowledge and, and, and know how to start a small business. And so we looked around for 
what we wanted to do. Didn't want to do retail. Didn't want to do restaurants. Didn't want to have all that pressure. Right. Um, so we came across signs, you know, and I've never, you know, even thought about signs, right? And so, right. so I was talking to someone and they said, you know, listen, everybody needs a sign. Even if you're going out of business, you need a going out of business sign, <laughs> right? So I'm like, hey, that's a great idea, right? And so people always ask me, why did you get in the sign business? And the true answer is it's the only one Teresa would say yes to. <laughs> and the follow-up <laughs> question is, why did Teresa say yes to it? And she, she would tell you that she thought it was less risky because we're selling signage to small businesses, right? Right. And that's the way you advertise. If you have a new vehicle, you need graphics on your vehicle. You have a new building, you need signs on your building. So now if you're in a small business arena, you're going to be needing signage, which kind of lends itself um, to it. So we, we started that 10 years ago. And I always tell people starting small businesses, to buckle up because it will be two years of absolute sheer terror and hell because you have no idea what to expect until you live through it. Right. right. So if you get through the first two years, um, you know, God, God bless you, but it's, and people say, well, you had no fun. I said, no, I had a blast, but it was the, you know, the, the, the unknown is it's, it's what you didn't know. Right. I knew right. everything about telecom in 25 years, but I had to rely on others as experts to help me in the sign business. And that was a little bit of, you know, walking across a tightrope without a net. So that was kind of scary from that standpoint. So, but, um, you know, we made it through the first two years and, and now we have of those four sons, our youngest two are actually in the business with me. Um, they're my succession plan. So one will take over the operation side of it. One will take over the sales side of it. And mm. Teresa and I will be on, plenty of cruises and vacations to Europe eventually. Nice. So that's the plan, right? So, but um, I'll just add, also add that I did not know about the small business ecosystem until I started my own small business, right? So right. in corporate America, I, I, I lived in, I used to live in Tequila over in Hamilton Mill, right? So I would get in a car at 6.30 in the morning and I'd drive downtown. I'd drop my kids off at school we pick people up, we get home at seven o'clock, right? Maybe 7.30. Right. And the only thing I knew about small businesses was the people who, you know, I didn't know anything really about the local area because I wasn't in the local area except for maybe on the weekends, right? Right. But now when we started small business, all the small businesses out there, it's just, it was amazing to me that they're all there that, you know, but you kind of ignore, you know how when you buy a new car and let's say you buy a, a new shiny um, Kia Telluride that's right. white. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you, yep. You can't believe how many white Kia Tellurides are on the road. Exactly, exactly. So just like just like that, you know, I couldn't believe how many small businesses were there. And I also found out that small businesses like to do business with other small businesses, and that was the beauty of it. We were all trying to get get ahead and get together. Um, from the beginning. So that was kind of a, even though I was on an island by myself with Teresa, we're also in that small business ecosystem is what I would call it. So. Nice. So we just want to say that uh, we are not putting any advertisements in for Kia Tellurides. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't pay us enough. They didn't offer us enough. Second of all, if his yeah. wife Teresa is listening, there may be one outside <laughs> on their home when they get home. <laughs> they don't. If he hints, hints. Or he's <laughs> <not>. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, but no, aside from that, so tell me what influenced you to pursue interest in a state contract? Because, you know, I, I met you guys through the state processing and, and system, actually through our small business procurement readiness workshop. And um, just for our viewers or listeners who are um, wondering about that, that is one of our goals is to provide an environment that um, small businesses can learn knowledge and business building techniques that are applicable applicable to doing business with the state of Georgia, right? And so um, we put together these workshop, a seven series workshop, a, a series in a workshop in order to have that business building uh, platform or knowledge and also learn about that whole procurement process. 
So my my question is, when you said, Don, you know, you really didn't know the small business community and, and you really didn't know, you know, some of the ins and outs of what's really goes on behind closed doors with that. I just want to ask, uh, what drew you to pursue an interest in state contract? And as you all attended that workshop, were there things that were there that helped with that decision? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a very interesting question. So um, I'm more of an instant gratification kind of guy. Mm-hmm. So when Me you're too. dealing with state yeah. contracts and things like that, they typically are long-term contracts, right? It takes a while to get yeah. them done. So, mm-hmm. you know, over time, we've thrown in bids for a lot of things, right? And so uh, we've done some construction bids. And we, we actually threw in a bid to Fulton County government for a library project. They were remodeling all of their libraries, so they wanted to rebuild all of their monument signs, the ones on the street that say, you know, hate Phil library or whatever. Gotcha. And so, um, you know, we were the uh, dog that caught the bus and didn't know what to do with it. Right. We won the contract. Um, but so we started going into it and started realizing that you can't just build a sign. You got to get approvals from the government, right. from the design firm that worked with the government from the general contractor that works with the design firm that works with the government. So about six months into that contract, I said to myself, why did I win this contract? Right. It's like, right. <laughs> did I really want this? Yeah. And so, but after six months, it took us about 18 months to finish it out. It got a lot easier. Right. And we started to understand what it took to service the contract. Um, but we have a lot of other business, a lot of commercial business. So, you know, Brad would, uh, was recently um, downsized by C2 Education, one of our other customers. And we were looking for someone to focus full time on construction and project bidding, you know, because that's not something that's, you know, you can just you know, spend 20 minutes and put together a bid. Right. We hired, we hired Brad because of his knowledge and background. So we figured if we were to get into this business, we had to have someone dedicated to this business or else. It would always be, I can't believe we caught the bus kind of thing. So and I'll, and I'll turn it over to Brad because I know he's been attending the workshops and he's the one that's been doing all the bidding now. So, Brad. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, and it was your inaugural workshop. And, uh, you know, as I said at the closeout of it, it was very impressive. You guys knocked it out of the park with the, with the presentation and the content. Um, and, yeah, you know, uh, you know, he alluded to it at the beginning is that he's a very short term uh, you know, I want uh, results now kind of a person. So uh, the patience of having to see things through through a long term, it's, you know, it's easier to, you know, for, for me to handle that end of it. Um, and he can handle the the day to day bread and butter type jobs. Uh, so I do. I'll, I'll go out and I look for uh, look for bids, uh, contracts for um, for any and everything uh, that uh, fit our, you know, fall within our wheelhouse and uh, got to follow them through and be patient and make it happen. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate that, Don. It's so funny because, Brad, I think you and I, we talked a little bit earlier and we shared that we've both been on our roles for a pretty short time. So it sounds like uh, we we had a kindred spirit to come together. You needed to prove something to Pinnacles, the custom sign, your owner, Don, because he like, I need it now. And I needed to prove to uh, DOAS, the Department of Administrative Services, that you know, uh, my value and my worth as well. So I'm, I am glad that you were able to get that experience and get that knowledge, you know, out of the workshop and the services that we're providing. And we stress not only, and you guys bring this home because we stress that you we hear doing business with the state, but it's not just doing business with the state. It's doing, it could be doing business within the state, right? And so from that, I understand that you spoke of Fulton County, Don, uh, the contract with them, that big bus that you captured on four legs, but also too, what were, what are some of your other contracts that you've garnered? Because if I understand it, you guys uh, also won a prime, as a prime contractor and as a subcontractor. You want to tell us a little about that and how did that happen? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, so the uh, uh, the bid one is a prime uh, prime contractor with Gwinnett County um, to uh, to build a monument sign at their central DO facility. Um, and uh, you know, as what I learned through your workshops, you know, being thorough, uh, what to look for in the in the uh, bidding paperwork and 
uh, putting together a good solid uh, uh, thorough bid. Uh, we put that bid in and, uh, you know, lo and behold, it uh, took a few weeks after the bid was submitted and we got the word from the county that uh, we had won the bid. Um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting as far as how bids go, uh, every governmental entity is very different as to how their bids go. Um, a lot of those bids are, they'll open the letter, they'll open the envelopes, and whatever the lowest number is, is that's our guy. Um, I just submitted a bid uh, last week, also with Gwinnett County, but theirs was not worried on, you know, so focused on price. Only 20% of theirs was focused on the price of the bid. Uh, the rest of it was, you know, how, uh, how uh, strong your business is, how strong the proposal is, the thorough understanding of the proposal. Um, so each bid uh, is approached you know, it's approached the same way, but the results and, you know, looking at how they're going to review them, uh, you have to kind of tailor each bid to how they're, uh, how they're tabulating the results. Um, second bid we uh, got was as a subcontractor. And um, that one, it started with me attending a mandatory uh, pre-bid meeting. Now, being kind of new to it, um, not completely understanding um, am I supposed to be there or not? I didn't think it was going to be a bad idea just to be there anyway to network because I figured pre-bid meetings is probably for the contractor, the general contractor. Me being a subcontractor, I didn't really need to be there. But again, I wanted my face. I wanted my business card. I wanted the business name there. Right. So if anybody says, oh, wasn't there a sign company there? Because, you know, 25% of that bid was for signage. So they were going to have to have a signed contractor for it. Right. Um, so in doing that, um, every person on that pre-bid meeting, uh, when I put my bid together, every one of them got an email from me with my bid. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the companies called me, called me back, uh, you know, a month or so later. This is, I think, I think it was actually... They won the bid in a month, and I think they let us know in two months that they were going to uh, hire us for the job. Uh, but with from that meeting as well, I have another contractor that was there that is uh, that is using our services for their company, uh, personal company, wrapping some vehicles. Um, and there was another side shoot to this project in Kennesaw that I went to the meeting of. Um, that you know around the corner, it wasn't part of the big one. Uh, I bid to that company that uh, won that one as well, and it looks like we're going to get uh, get the signage contract for that as well. So three new customers from one pre-construction meeting. Nice. That's that's how you stack them on wins on top of each other right there. That's a strategy. That's a strategy. <laughs> Very clever. So um, so you mentioned having to interact with. Um, all of these, let's say, different agencies and, and them having different processes and the ways of doing things. Did, did you all have an intentional way of, let's say, learning the lingo, you know, studying and understanding the processes of how all, the, all of them operated? So, so what was your, I guess, your approach to saying, OK, I want to do business with, with state agencies or, or even county agencies. How did you guys just learn how to get, you know, involved in, in the terminology and the language and, and you know, from that perspective? Well, I would tell you from a uh, from an operation standpoint, after the contract is awarded, then you know it was really feeling your way through it, right? Mm -hmm. And and every business, whether it's a small business, a government, or whatever, it's a people business, right? Right. So right. once people, you know, and so as an example, on Fulton County, we're doing sixteen libraries, right? The first library. They were all over me, like, you know, like you wouldn't believe because we had to perform for them, right? Right. But by the fifth, sixth, seventh library, they understood that we stood behind everything we did and everything like that. So that relationship built up. And we, after we got through how the process works, that's when we said, you know what? It's not that bad once you get past the initial bidding and the initial awarding, right? right. And now that we have you know, fairly significant feather in our cap for completing a government contract. Why don't we build on that? Now, as far as the lingo and the bidding, I personally did not submit the bid that won. Someone in my gotcha. team did. Okay. And gotcha. good for them because I'm not a detail person. Right. But as far as 
uh, the current booze. I'll let Brad really talk to that. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm I'm the type of guy that over researches everything because um, I I don't like screwing things up. Um, <laughs> right. And, you know, I, I have that's again, a good approach. Know, yeah. well, certainly. <laughs> Um, creates longevity for you, Brad. Right, I, right. I've seen both sides of the sign. As in, I was, I was a customer of Pinnacle Custom Signs. Oh, really? Uh, putting up signs all over the country, so yeah. I, I learned, I learned a lot on that end of it. But having been a customer and what I want to see, you know, in purchasing of a sign, you know, I can use that in the end of being the person selling it because I know, you know, I can better understand, you know, the, the customers. Think like a customer. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, in construction, you know, I've been dealing with building out, uh, you know, the education centers all over the country. So I'm familiar with construction and how contractors work and, uh, and things like that. So, you know, a lot of that lingo and terminology transferred over with that, but, uh, you know, the, the DOIS workshop, uh, was definitely an excellent tool for me. Um, to dig in a little bit more into the, uh, you know, the state and county type of uh, their approaches. Uh, it did, it did add a lot of understanding to things. And, and again, as with everything you do everywhere, you learn something new every day. If not, then, then there's a problem. Uh, so if there's something I don't know, I'm going to find out. And now I know it and I can apply that to my next, uh, you know, my next situation. You know, and it's so funny, Don, you said that you're not a, the detailed person, but you are. You, you're, that's the sign of a great leader. You know, you may not know everything, but you know who to hire in order to get it done. So kudos well, to it's, you. It's funny you mentioned that. So I tell people all the time, I can't design a sign. I can't make a sign and I can't install a sign. I really don't want to. My job is to develop customer relationships and sell. Right. Yeah, right. And so. You know, when, when people, you know, challenge me, my, my, when my team, my, we have a, a great time here because everybody challenges everybody. Like, there's no hierarchy here. So they'll come to me and say, why don't you design that? I said, I don't design, I sell. And then I then I use a line from uh, A Few Good Men, you might remember it, where Jack Nichols is sitting there and goes, you want me on that wall. Right. You need me on you that, that wall. <laughs> I love that. Okay, I provide the very protection. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you. I, 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 I don't don't line from that movie. Let, let's just don't get her started on movie <laughs> lyrics. On song <laughs> lyrics. That's where we're really get in trouble. Started on movie lines and song <laughs> lyrics. I'm just saying. <laughs> I sure will be some way somewhere else down the road. I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> well, then we really need to team up with some trivia pursuit. Yeah. yeah there you go. There you go. Absolutely. It's a tough room over here to to win against. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Uh, well, we know, of course, in the last year, right, um, you know, COVID has impacted every business, but some businesses in different ways, right? So have, have you all, or how, if you were impacted um, by COVID and maybe last year, and then even as things may be shifting this year, how are things maybe different now than they may have been previously? Um, you know, interesting. It's, it's interesting because um, our business is national, right? National right. in scope, right? So, um, when COVID hit, as you guys know, part, different parts of the country handled it differently, right? right. And so I had um, $30,000, $40,000 worth of signs sitting in a warehouse in New Jersey mm. waiting for the government to approve them. And as you know, they were shut down for six, right. nine months, right? right? So I went from, a, from a, a pretty decent level of revenue in January and February to about... I'd say 20% down in um, March, April, and May. Wow. Okay. But then it came roaring back because, um, uh, as you notice when you go to the grocery store or at someone else, they got these things called signs that say, keep yeah. your distance. <laughs> right. Right. The yeah. sign business probably exploded, you know. <laughs> so, and I would say it's not new customers, but it's existing right. customers. So, I guess. Georgia State University would also be considered a government contract, right? We do a lot of yep. business with them. So before they reopened their campus last um, fall, in, in August of last year, we'd put down in every single building, in every single classroom, social distancing signs. I think we were out for a week 
you wow. know, five or six people going out and doing that. You wouldn't believe how many buildings Georgia State has now. It's a ton. I, I, I work on the Georgia State campus, yeah. so I can. So you know. You right? know I've, that means I've seen your signs in it's elevators and everywhere. Absolutely. I didn't know those you guys. Well, now I know. Now I know. Right. So, but, so it came roaring. It did come roaring back. So last year, um, even though we had those downturns, we wound up squeaking out a 5% increase in revenue over 2019. Wow. Right. We also added people. And we also built another 3,500 square feet onto our building, right? So, you know, there's there's opportunities everywhere, right? But what I'll tell you is, interestingly, and and, and I don't know if if other businesses have seen this, is that our business is a a consistent, you know, got to have it. So um, we have customers just bought a vehicle. They need a wrap on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Just just opened up a new office suite. They need, you know, a sign for it. So that's what I call steady business. Right. Then there's project business. I'm redeveloping a shopping center and things like that. So it appeared that between November and February, there was so much uncertainty in that project business. Right. That revenues really slowed down because I think people were really nervous until the new administration took over what that uncertainty was going to be. But once the, once the transition happened and then the vaccine started rolling out, the project started to come again and our revenues then kicked up again in March. So we're very bullish on the rest of the year, but there was that lull that I didn't expect. Because when it came roaring back, I figured we were, you know, we were in in in, in like Flynn. And all of a sudden in January and February it slowed down, which was very disheartening. But I kind of dug through and realized that, you know, people are just being cautious until they can see the direction of what's going on. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, yeah. but, but you yeah. know. I would, I would say the other thing is that in this industry, there are people that pulled up stakes and went out of business, yeah. right? And so there was a consolidation factor. Other people, uh, other comp- other small businesses, and other businesses were looking for sign companies to pick up the slack. Yeah, and right. so we got some new customers because of that. So gotcha. it had both sides of it. We had our existing customers trying to prepare for COVID, and then you had other. Um, businesses that were looking for a new sign company because their sign company went out of business. Gotcha. And, and so as a quick follow-up to that, did, did you all change or adjust your marketing approach or your business development approach, whether it be with government contracts or other types of customers kind of during this time? Um, did you get more aggressive, different strategies? Cause how, did, how did you, again, approach your marketing strategy during this time? Well, you know, 75% of our business is with our repeat customers. Gotcha. And of the other 25%, about half of that is referrals from our repeat customers. So it wasn't a lot of, me- you know, we, we didn't have to do like, did you see the TV commercials? You know, we're, you know, we're, we're following all the CDC guidelines and we're masking up and we're going to clean our hands and all that for like people that come coming into your house and things like that. Right. We did follow the protocols here. You know, we know we had masks and the whole nine yards, but there was really no marketing spin because, Believe it or not, and I don't know if you've ever thought about it, science is an event-driven business. Mm-hmm. You you got a new car, yeah. you need graphics. You got a new right. business, you need a new sign. You're going to have a golf tournament, you need golf tournament signs. You're going to go to a trade show, you need trade show displays. You can't knock on a door and say, hey, you're looking for a sign? It just doesn't happen that way, right? right. And no one's putting signs under the Christmas tree for presents, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> so we got that going on, right? So, and I, I joke to people, I said, you can't cold call for signs. I've made two cold calls in 10 years and I have a hundred percent, I have a hundred percent close rate. That's the, uh, right, right. <laughs> nice statistics there. They, they, were actually, right, right. they were actually challenges by my wife, right? So we were going to a restaurant in our local area and the guy had a banner on his building as opposed to a sign on his building. And he was in the in there. So I walk in, I give him my business card. I said, hey, you know, I can make you a sign. You know, I don't know what your financial situation is, but I can make you a sign. Here's my card. If you have any questions, you need anything, just give me a call. Two weeks later, he calls me and I make him a sign. Same way at the grocery store. I was walking by a suite and uh, a new uh, company had moved into the suite, a travel agency. And I gave him a card. I said, if you need a sign, just let me know. Because my wife challenged me again. She goes, I bet you won't go in there and give me your card. I said, yeah, I will. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I like his wife. I'm he just saying. Right? <laughs> Smart girl. She had, to, she had to put up with five boys. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes, I can't imagine. Not even just your grocery bill alone, okay? <laughs> 
Hey, that means that they're going to carry on the tradition and the um, the legacy. I'm, uh, are they in the business, Don? Are your boys in the business? The youngest, the youngest two are, and the older two are not. But the older two are happy not to be. <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of interesting. It's uh, the reason that, you know we talk about the reason we start a small business. Well, I've always wanted to start start a small business, but my son number three, who's not. Um, He's, he, he, he was graduating college and he said to me, I don't really want to go to work in an office or anything like that. I don't really want to work in a restaurant. I said, hey, let's see if I can find a small business and you can run it for me. And so when we found the sign business was not something he could run for me because it was too complicated. Right. So that's when I decided to leave corporate America, too. But he's been with me since day one. Um, and son number four came in two years later and within a month. He picked up the contract for Georgia State University. So, wow. hey. nice. He's nice. got the skills. Right. Uh, so, if you don't mind, so we talked about, Paul talked about, and you talked about your marketing strategies. Is there anything else that you've adjusted or pivoted due to the rent? Is it more of your business model? You, you talked about the different signs. Do you do different signs? Do do for different offerings uh, for what you offer? Uh, or has any of your, the financial model, you know, some of these places were uh, 30 days out payouts or however um, that they, you know, do invoicing. Has any of that changed? Had you, have you had to adjust any of that? I'm kind of getting into your business pockets. Oh, no, that's fair. I mean, we did, uh, we did, we did, we did get blessed with a PPP loan, right? And that helped, helped tide us over because you're right. Um, payables, Mm-hmm. Um, receivables really got extended there. So that was hurting us a little bit. But the other thing that um, we we changed our business model to make sure that we can bring all of the sign manufacturing in-house. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to have a lot of people that were, we would buy signs from like electrical signs and things like that, and monument signs that were outsourced. So we had a fabricator make them for us and we bought them from them, right? Well, you know, when they're giving you eight, 12 weeks, turnaround times that you really can't count on, you know, you'd rather have control over it yourself. Right. And so we did that. We brought it all in house. So when we're, you know, looking at contracts and things like that, we know that we dictate our own time frame. you know, and it's not, it's interesting. People say, well, it's to lower your costs. Right. I said, no, it's to deliver on time to our customers. Will it lower my costs? Yeah, probably. So eventually, but we've never done anything about bringing production or anything else in-house to lower costs. It was always to service the customers better. Great answer. Great answer. Okay. Then I have to ask the question, Paul, if you don't mind, I'm just going to ask, would you, what would you recommend for other small businesses who are pursuing state contracts? I'm going to take it back there just to say, just to ask, you know, uh, you guys have been very, quite successful in a short period of time. I mean, one after the other in very different ways. As Brad mentioned, you know, his marketing efforts are just showing up at a bidders conference. Another of, you know, your, your, uh, your wife just kind of egg, egging you on and <laughs> then through Fulton County and just going out there, not really knowing what to expect, but just casting your net. So what would you recommend for those uh, small businesses pursuing uh, state contracts? Um, you know, what I would, would say is that, you know, the thoroughness of it, the experience of it is if, if you're an entrepreneur, you're, you know, you're an owner operator that if you've never been in the contract business before, either get the education on it or find someone that, that you can hire that does that as well. Because if your business model is predicated solely on government contracts, then you're going to have a really, I said two years of hell previously, it's probably five years of hell. So you get up and going, right? Mm. So you got to have the commercial business and pair it with the government business, right? And there's two, there are two different beasts in the sign industry. So I would say get knowledgeable and get someone that has knowledge of it and make sure you're thorough enough to be able to dot all, uh, dot all the I's across all the T's mm-hmm. from that standpoint. So what I heard him say, Paul, was make sure that you attend that Department of <laughs> Services, small business procurement. Right? That's, that's, that's what Brad would say. Yes. That's, that's, I was going to say that if he didn't start talking. Is, is you know, build the foundation, you know, um, and you can decorate it as you go along. 
Um, and yeah, thoroughness is very important. And don't be afraid. Um, as long as you're confident in your skills and abilities, don't be afraid of looking at a contracting set and saying, you know, I know I can do this. I may have to figure out the details as I go along, but I know I can do this because you know what? Sometimes there may be a bid out there that you're the only bidder on. And you know what that means? You just won that bid. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, you see, don't be afraid to get your name out there and, and uh, give you the attempt. Yeah. And the other, the other thing I, I would say is the, the commercial versus government. Yes. You've got to build your rep, right? Mm -hmm. People buy from people they know, know, like, and trust. And yeah. from a government, government specifically, they want to see that you've actually done that before, right? Not, not that you can do that, but that you have done that. And, and I, you would be the same way. Right. If, if, if your job was to procure something, you don't want to find someone that you can count on versus someone that you really like. No, that's very true. I mean, think about just, you know, in hiring your employees and your team, building your team, you you want to give opportunity to someone whom you see potential in. But yeah. most likely you're going to hire someone who has that experience, just as you mentioned, you know, uh, Brad had the experience from C2 education. You knew that you brought him on and it, it, it follows along uh, all across lines. And, you know, getting your foot in the door can also open up other opportunities as well. You know, you do a great job on this project. Not every uh, project is a bid project. Right. Um, you know, so the purchasing agents say, I, you know, they have a thousand dollar job of I need five signs for inside or whatever, whatever the widget you're selling is, is if you've proven that you can do the job and they say, you know what? I like dealing with these people. We have this little small thing. Just get it from them. There's no need for a bid. Uh, and that can that can spread out as well. And, you know, then they're, you know, one of their coworkers says, hey, who did that for you? And, you know, oh, go call, go call these guys. They'll take care of it for you. Yeah, they do that a lot. Like she, he mentioned with Georgia State, a lot of the colleges, universities, they do that. The, uh, the procurement officers, the purchasing officers, it's good to know all of those agency professionals in order to get to know them and build that rapport and reputation you're absolutely you get that reputation and then you know i mean i will tell you that our 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 um our um secret sauce is you know i say customer service but it's really three things it's the quality of service the speed of service which is key for some people the speed of service and then the team providing the service and a lot of my competitors can do one or two of those, but not a lot of them can do all three of those. And it really, it really makes a difference, especially when people are trying to turn things quickly, right? I mean, right. I'll tell you, um, when Brad was in his position, right, he was opening up centers. All he would do is email me, hey, Don, I'm opening up an address at 123 Main Street in, uh, in um, Ensenada, California. Get me a sign. And believe it, believe it or not, because... We'd work so close together. And I do this for other customers, too. They never ask me for the price, believe it or not. The first time they see the price is when they get the final bill. Because they trust that I'm going to treat them right, that I'm going to take care of their signs. And then Brad can go deal with the GCs building out the center, yeah. with hiring the people to work in the center. He doesn't have to worry about the signs. And that's, again, that's the whole model. And, you know, I, I'd have to tell you that Teresa and I were in Bell South, which if you've ever experienced anybody that was in Bell South or Telecom, they beat customer service into your head. And so you can't think of anything but customer service. Really? Because I don't get that when I call. <laughs> no, 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 it, no it, changed, it changed in 2004. That's what AT&T, the Death Star. Yeah. Right. Death Star. Everybody <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, Don. Okay. <laughs> I left. I left when that happened. Because okay. If you guys are Georgia natives, if you remember Bell South back in the 90s and 80s, they were actually really good customer service back yeah. then. But then, you know, telecom wars and everything else, just like you know, cables and stuff like that. It gets, it gets crazy, but we, you know, we, we were great. Uh, bread and bread, bread and butter was customer service. It was the first thing that was always beat into our head. So. Absolutely. Well, you guys have been to me sharing a lot of great nuggets, um, you know, over the last couple of minutes, just in terms of, I think it'll help a lot of small businesses. So as we kind of start to wrap up, um, any guess final thoughts uh, from you all as it relates to, again, what you would, in terms of this climate, but even as things you know shift going forward, what, what are some best practices, uh, whether it be, again, applying for state contracts as well as just business in general, 
Uh, would you want to share with other small business owners just to help them, you know, navigate what they're doing and kind of keep their business moving forward? You know, what I would always tell people, and I talk to a lot of people starting new business, is listen, you need to envision where you're going to be in five years, right? Really envision where you're going to be in five years, right? And so Teresa and I did that, right? And we said, you know what? We want a million dollars in revenue in five years, right? So what does that look, what does that look like? How big is the facility? How many employees do you need to have? This, that, and the other thing. And then put together a pro forma, a budget, mm-hmm. year by year, that gets you there, right? Right. And then, you know, depending on your level of risk, if you want to take the risk to try to get there sooner, you know, like let's say I knew I'm going to have to have 10 employees to do that. Well, I just found this great employee in year two, this great person in year two. Do I want to take the risk? to hire them now knowing that I'll need them in a year or two, right? Yeah. And so we have that plan to get there in five years. We got there in three, right? But you know what? We always had a budget. We always had our viewpoint on it. And we always had a roadmap as to where we're going. And I always like to use the uh, old Lewis Carroll line from Alice in Wonderland, right? If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And that's the problem. I went to see my my financial planner before I started this business because my wife said, again, very wise person said, unless Dave says you can do it, we're not doing it, right? So I'm like, I'm like is Dave like a part of this marriage? She goes, yeah, he totally is. Right? Me and Dave now, right? Uh, so I so I so I go we, we go meet with him, right? And I show him my five year pro forma and I lay it all out for him. He looks at me. He goes, I don't need to see that. So what do you mean? He goes. Just the fact that you have a pro forma is right. better than 50% of small businesses out there. Wow. They're just open up business and fly by the seat of their pants. Yeah. They wouldn't know if they made money, you know, right. even if QuickBooks told them they made money. You know, it's one of those things where understand where you're going, understand your plan. And if, and if you do that, then even, even the two years of hell and the setbacks, you know, it's like, oh, that's okay. We'll get there eventually. That's okay. Because you got to learn things like that. But I've always found that you've got to understand where you're going. And the second thing I would say is don't let the business consume you and your family. A lot of small businesses do that. Teresa and I have a 7-7 rule. You know what the 7-7 rule is? Yeah, you can't talk about business before 7 a.m. You can't talk about business after 7 p.m. I love it. Right? I adopt that rule. I mean, <laughs> and, and it, it, because otherwise, again, two sons in the business. You don't, you don't yeah. want to know how many times we had to tell them we're Don and Teresa in the office and mom right. and dad not in the office. Right. <laughs> right. Don't blur those lines, right? Yeah. All right. I love it. Would you tell me, tell me, please, which way ought I go? Which way? Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Right. I tell you, those are movie lines. Don't get me. Yeah. Yeah. Started, <laughs> man. I warned you. I warned you. And I, I would say on my end of it, don't be afraid to ask questions. Oh, yeah. Don't Good be afraid thing. to ask for help. Yeah. And, uh, you know, network. Provide the customer service. You'll get, you'll get uh, repeat business through that. Just short and simple. Be thorough. Good stuff. And study so hard that you won't make a mistake, right? Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah, I, I'll I'll guarantee you. I'll know everything there is to know about that particular widget before yeah. I, you know, jump into telling somebody else about it. I know what color it is, what size, what it's made of, how long it takes to make, all of it. Yeah. <laughs> and the government lingo can throw you off yeah. too. And the other thing I would I would say in general is that there needs to be more resources for small businesses starting up and more encouragement for people in college and in high school to look at, you know, you don't have to go into corporate America. Maybe you want to start working for a small business so you can create your own small business. To me, I, I realize now, having been on the other side of the of the of the coin, that you know. Small businesses are the lifeblood out there. And the more and more we know about that, the more and more we can help people to right. do that, you know, the better off we are. I, I remember sitting with my friend who had a heating and air company from church uh, before I started this. Right. And he finally looked at me and says, well, e- either talk about it or do it. You know, don't, don't, right. don't do both, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know, I do want to do it, but I also want to make a difference, right? I'm in, in Bell South, a large corporation, what difference does, does it make that 
you manage this or do that, right? Right. I know for a fact that we created 20 good paying jobs in our local community by opening wow. up. Awesome. And that's that's an important part for me and Teresa. Uh, and it's an important part for the community itself. And that's where we are kind of proud of that. You know, you ask about all of our accomplishments, it's not how big we are, it's not about it's about how we brought together a family to service customers, but also to make a difference in their lives. That's, that's, that's great. That's great. So uh, yeah, we, we appreciate you guys coming on and, and sharing your story and, and, and your successes and some of the things that may, may not have gone so well. Um, it, yeah, highly valuable insights um, that you shared. And, and you're, you're absolutely right about small business resources. I know uh, T- Talisha um, is, as I said, she's the chief small business cheerleader for the state. Uh, so I know she has, she has uh, uh, shares that same sentiment uh, from, from that standpoint. If you yeah. haven't taken her workshop, take her workshop. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's an excellent tool. Absolutely. Yes. Small businesses are important to the growth and success of our, of our economy, period. Um, so we know all of the opportunities that they provide. I come from that background from a, a small business family. So I grew up knowing I'm like your son, Don, your sons. I know what it's like to hear the talk all day at dinner and come home and why are we taking a vacation? And no, we're not. And we're, uh, yeah. So, but I just want to say not only the Department of Administrative Services, the readiness workshops that are available. Um, the our uh, Georgia Procurement Registry, our TGM Marketplace, is the first place to start uh, to do business with the state of Georgia. Getting registered, getting notifications for any bids and uh, contracts that are out there, solicitations, uh, visiting and paying attention to your local state and government agencies and USG agencies, colleges, technical colleges, uh, universities, paying attention to their marketing strategies because according to their marketing strategies, you can get an insight as to what they're going to need, what their needs are, and what they will be buying to fulfill that. Uh, In addition, I know, Paul, I'm going to put a plug for you also, Department of Administrative Services, Small Business Readiness Workshop. We also have informational sessions, as Don and Brad mentioned, staying connected um, in this virtual environment for your marketing tools. Uh, So please stay connected. Visit doas.ga.gov. Navigate to our small business webpage that we designated for small businesses exclusively. There you'll find tools, resources, um, and other uh, events and training that are eligible to our small business owners in our business community. There we also have our resources and and partners, such as the UGA SVDC. So when they talked about pivoting your business and financial model and uh, uh, business model, I'm so glad that Paul is around uh, and the UGA SVDCs are around to talk about capability and capacity. So, Paul, I'll let you close this out. Thank you guys so much, Pinnacle Custom Signs, for being here. Thank you for being a part of the workshop and being a part of my cheerleading team. (laughs) thank you for having us you're welcome yeah and and we truly appreciate uh you all again for for being on the show with us and definitely appreciate um talisha with uh, doas and the great work that they do over there um again as a resource partner for the small business development center um in the state of georgia and and our our privilege um really to serve small businesses because our goal is to help again strengthen the economy uh, through helping small businesses and so we want to thank you our audience for listening to this episode of small business fuel Our goal at the UGA SBDC, as I was kind of saying earlier, is to provide you with relevant resources, practical tools, and training and resources to help small businesses grow and succeed. If you would like to connect with us to get one-on-one help for your business, we have business consultants at 18 locations around the state to assist you. Uh, Please visit our website at www.georgiasbdc.org forward slash Atlanta to get connected to the office at Georgia State University. Or if you just go to georgiasbdc.org, you can actually connect to any office in the state. All right. So until our next episode of Small Business Fuel, please stay healthy, safe, and profitable, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free 